this next unlucky woman? Oh, yeah, because it's like four names. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Margie Velma Bullard Barfield. Whoa. Say that five times fast. She is perhaps the unluckiest woman alive. Well, yeah, I feel like it when I was reading what happened to her. She had six victims and her spree was from 1969 to 1978 in North Carolina. That's quite a long quote unquote reign. Yeah. And I think for some of these women, their reigns are a little bit longer because it is people they know that they're killing. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the men who are running around and just getting this fix like this is calculated and it's like oh i need some money time for you to die but like the other one that we talked about oh there's a house fire and she happened to not be there but her husband was and he died so what did she take the smoke detector batteries out I don't know. It was in 1969, so it's probably easier to get away with house fires. But then, soon afterwards, the entire home happened to go up in flames, which I'm going to guess is to cover up evidence. Uh Aha. Then she married this guy named Jennings Barfield, but that lasted about a year, and then he died. (laughs) Oh, my God. No, one one year. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So... Then um, she moved in with her parents, but then her father died of cancer. Maybe. I mean, I'll be honest. Maybe. Maybe maybe not. Yeah. And then her mother died of a mysterious illness. Of course. Yeah. Her boyfriend died. that mysterious malady. Yes. And then her boyfriend also died in a car accident. I mean, this sounds like the other unlucky woman. I mean, there's car bombs. There's car accidents. People dying of mysterious illness. This is insane. This is. So um, then... She moved in with an elderly couple to be their nurse. Isn't she the sweetest? A year later, sadly, they died. She's got this like (laughs) black cloud hanging over her. The next elderly man that she took care of also died. I mean, within months. So then she moved in with her boyfriend. His name was Stuart Taylor. And he died of a mysterious illness. And this is where the streak of her bad luck ends. Why? Because it was Did someone his... finally say, okay, you right. have a lot of people dying around you? Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much, I think someone who loved Stuart Taylor was like, uh, let's check this out. Right. <laughs> there is one thing I wanted to share from her story that I just felt like was a really interesting fact. And you know, we both love interesting facts. So they think that she may have been suffering from a personality disorder like as in she had multiple personalities mm, and supposedly on that one. yeah so she had had a lot of sexual trauma Aww. um and incest that's what i'm saying like a lot of these stories yeah. for these people are really sad so i guess that one of the personalities came out and admitted to the murders so they tried to get her from having a death sentence to having a life sentence instead partly due to this and partly due to her behavior and she became a changed person and actually prison was probably good for her <laughs> um, okay but when they went and talked to the judge This is what he said in reference to her personality disorder, and I quote, and this is in reference to there being multiple personalities, okay? One of them did it. I don't care which one. And she was executed by lethal injection and was the first woman in North Carolina. Wow. I mean, I'm sorry, but if you can't control your personalities. eh. Well, yeah. So what they were saying is that she should be treated more like a mental patient. Usually what happens is, is if it's because of insanity, we do not execute them. So it's just one of those things where you just realize that abuse is, it does not turn this way for everyone who's been abused, but it can turn so bad for some yeah. people and affect others in just really horrific ways. So I think we're going to close with what I call pure evil, and that is Tilly Klemek. So her date range is 1914 to 1921 in Chicago. She had five to seven victims. And Monica, I think that you should share with us this litany of things that this woman did. She is, I, I just think she's evil personally. OMG. She was known for predicting the deaths of neighborhood dogs yeah. uh, because she killed them. Most likely. 
Yeah, okay. And so in 1914, she predicted the death of her husband, who died three weeks after the prediction. And she collected his life insurance money. Shocker. But then she remarried after going to a matchmaker. I mean, who doesn't love a good matchmaker? Right. And that husband died within three months of the marriage, just as Tilly predicted. What happened to her third husband, Monica? Yeah, so he did survive a few years, but then he also died. Yeah. Uh, and she correctly predicted the death of a neighbor. Oh, gee, what a shock. Yeah. Yeah. This woman had been raising suspicion that maybe Tilly was a murderer. Oh, yeah. there's no motive there. Not at all. Yeah, none. None. Nope. Tilly also correctly predicted the death of three children belonging to a family that she was having trouble with. And sure enough. You know, the children died. She killed... Uh, okay. Yeah, and that's then, why I say pure evil. Pure, pure evil. evil. Killing children. Pure evil. And then she had a fourth husband. Mm-hmm. And he got sick. But his family yes. came to visit. And he went to the hospital where they pumped his stomach. And this ended Tilly's clairvoyant streak as she was <laughs> sentenced to life in prison for trying to kill her husband. And she was also not allowed to cook food for the other inmates. That was literally written <laughs> into her conviction. That is just too fantastic. I, I mean, can you just imagine? Oh, yeah, these dogs are going to die. Oh, she's killing dogs like in children yeah no okay so i can see why you ended with pure evil because yeah 